Hello and welcome to Treasure in Every Verse. I'm your host, author and Bible teacher, Kevin Madison. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, friends, we're, we're back. I told you I'll come back at, at 10 o'clock, uh, same day, just to finish up where, where we were on, um, uh, we were talking about the body, the spirit body versus the, the, uh, the natural body. And where we were going with this was talking about uh, the unbeliever having a body, you know, that's not similar to uh, or dissimilar to a believer's body with Christ. But let me show you the difference. All right. So we got here. Ah, let me do that. We got here and we were talking about this, this body right here. All right. So however, the spiritual don't come first. But the natural, what is the natural? That's, we're, we're talking about this stuff right here, okay? And afterwards comes the spiritual. So what is he talking about? You are naturally born right here on earth in the physical realm, all right? After you die, you move, you and I move up into the spiritual realm. All right, still in world one. Folks, I, I don't have time to build up on world one for those that don't know, but others who've been watching this for a while know what I'm talking about when I say world one. You can always go back. I got a video talking about the worlds, so you can always go back and watch that video. All right, so you move up. Now, this is, so it may be a little difficult for you to understand this, but I'm going to say it anyway. When a person dies, okay, I'm talking physical death. When a person dies, what happens to them? On earth, somebody takes their body and they either cremate it or they put it in a grave. Or if something tragic happens to that, that person, it's insinuated, some wild beast eats it, or whatever, right? In other words, the physical body goes into the grave. Now, the spirit of that person goes back to God. And there's several things that could happen to that person here on earth. Okay, this is the plan. There's a place underneath the earth. And this place is called the place of torment. Okay? Every unbeliever who dies physically go here. They never leave earth. They immediately go down. And you can go read about all of this in the book of uh, Ezekiel, okay? They go down to this place, and this is what Jesus was talking about, a rich man, uh, Lazarus and the rich man, to this place called torment. Now, in the story with Lazarus and the rich man, was the rich man simply a spirit without a body? was Lazarus and Abraham a spirit without a body? No. How do I know that? Because a spirit, a spirit, doesn't make a difference whose spirit, whether it's God's spirit, the angel's spirit, or human spirits. A spirit is what? Invisible. It's not only invisible to humans, but it's invisible to angels. No one can see a spirit. It's invisible. Now, in the scriptures, when people, when God pulls the veil back to reveal things to him, to them, in the scriptures, it's the only place you should ever get that kind of stuff. These people that are saying they died and went to heaven and hell, man, forget that. That messes up the devil. 
okay? God did this for, for a specific purpose in the scriptures to show us some things. Outside of that, don't believe that mess. All right, because Paul, when God took him, said it was unlawful for a man or anybody to even talk about what they saw. That's what I'm telling you. Anybody that see they went to hell, they went to heaven, and come back and start talking about it, forget it, man. It's not biblical. So stay away from that mess. Okay, so a spirit is invisible, but the rich man was able to see Lazarus. Lazarus was able to see him. The rich man was able to see Abraham. Now, Abraham had lived thousands of years before this man was born. He even recognized Abraham. The rich man had eyes. He could see. He had mouth, tongue, all that mess. He can talk. He had feelings. He had remembrance. I mean, memory. He had all this stuff. So what, what does that mean? That means the man had a body. He wanted a drink of water. Spirits don't drink water. Spirits have no need of water. Why? Because they're invisible. You got some invisible water to give this invisible spirit. And they don't get thirsty. They don't get hot. They don't get cold. So what is that saying? That's saying there's a physical body. Well, wait a minute. Isn't his body, you know, six feet under the ground? Yes. Then how did he end up getting another body? Everybody, every person is always in possession of their bodies. Well, wait a minute, Kevin. Didn't you just show us in 1 Corinthians, I mean, in, in, yeah, in 1 Corinthians 15, didn't you just show us that we're going to get this body later? Folks, I keep trying to tell you that the Bible teach that this area up here do not have time. There is no time here in the spirit realm. The only place that have time is here. Once you die, once you get out of this physical, natural world, there's no such thing as time. So, is there a future for the people who die and leave the earth and go to this place for unbelievers? Unbelievers. Is there a future event in their life? No. Since this thing is future. Now, for the believers that live, that leave and come up here with the Lord Jesus Christ, do they have their resurrected body? Of course they do. No disembodied spirit floating around in heaven. I mean, you wouldn't be able to see him. Now, how do I know that? Because the scriptures clearly, clearly, just like the story about Abraham and the rich man and Lazarus showing you there under the earth, it shows you here in the book of uh, Revelation about the people in heaven. Take the whole counsel of God. Enoch went to heaven. Did he not? The Bible said God took him. How do you think he took him? The same way he took Elijah. Elijah went alive. Flesh and blood. He had blood. You think he went up to heaven with that blood? No. I'm going to show you how he went up in just a minute. But just so you can see, John goes up Right? He goes up into heaven. This is basically the rapture. After these things, after the church age is over, I, I looked 
John is an eyewitness. He looked, and behold, a door standing. And this door was open. The portal between the spirit realm and the physical realm, God opened it so that John could see it. Where was it? It was in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, the first voice, that means he heard more than one eventually, but this was the first one he heard, sound like a trumpet speaking with me. Now, trumpets don't speak. It was a voice like the sound, not the sound of a trumpet, but loud like a trumpet blowing. How would John recognize a trumpet? Back in his days, trumpets would sound as an alarm as an alarm if the enemy was coming to attack. It was also sounded as for the assembly into the temple. So John was used to hearing trumpets. So why do he use this, the trumpets? Because it's associated with Israel. John knows what that is. The Lord knows what that is because he gave it to Israel, the two silver trumpets. All right. Speaking with me, saying, come up here. Same thing he told Enoch. Same thing he told Elijah. I will show you things. I will. Who? God. I will show you things which must take place after this. Folks, God is showing him the future now. God is showing him the future. Now, watch this. Immediately. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, immediately, I was what? In the spirit. Whoa, wait a minute. What is he talking about? He was in the spirit. Boom. Exactly what I told you right here. Immediately, he left the physical and went into the spiritual. And behold, a throne set in heaven and one set on the throne. How? Did he see a throne? Of course he's seen a throne. Okay, so the throne is real. Right? Now, he said, I also seen one who sat. Is that person real? Yeah, but I thought God was a spirit. And invisible. Isn't that what the Bible teach? Yeah. So who's sitting on this throne? And how in the world could he see him? Come on, man. God has a body. What body? The Lord Jesus Christ. He sees somebody sitting on the throne. And first of all, John. What about him? Get there. And he who sat, he, John, seen a male on the throne. There's no females on the throne. So, oh, Kevin, you're a chauvinist. I ain't no doggone chauvinist. God says I'm a male. Well, what am I supposed to say? He's not? Get out of here. He who sat on there was like a jasper and a sasper. Uh, Saudi stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne so John seen a rainbow now this rainbow in color was emerald how do I know that emerald what color is emerald is it this this multicolor mesh you see no man it's emerald go back and look and see what that is in heaven all right Around the throne, there were, around the throne, there was something John seen. What did you see, John? I saw 24 thrones. Were the thrones real? Of course they were real. He said he saw them. And on the thrones, on, on somebody was sitting there. What did he see? I saw. I'm an eyewitness to this. 
24 elders. What were the elders doing? Sitting. And they had on clothes. And they had on crowns. And they had heads. <laughs> Folks, come on. Come on, man. Did he see spirits? I ain't John ain't seen no spirit, man. Spirit ain't on no head. Spirits don't wear clothes. Spirits don't sit down. No, he's seen people. Well, where did he get their bodies from? In a moment, in a twinkle in the eye. Folks, this is John seeing this in the future. He went up to heaven. He said, oh, this is after the rapture. No, there ain't no after no rapture, man. It is after the rapture, but that's how it is right now. The spirit realm. This realm. Don't have any time. It's always present. So, what did he see? He seen people. Not disembodied spirits. He seen people. That's my point to you. There's people here with bodies. And there's people here with bodies. There are angels and demons here in bodies. God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is there in a body. All right. Let's go back. And from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and all this stuff. Okay. Now, let's, let's go back to where we were. Let's sort of wrap this up. Hi, Allah. The spirit didn't come first, but the natural, not the spiritual. The first man was of the earth. Meaning of the earth. The first man was made of the dust. He was made of the dust of the earth. Oh, that is right. Made of the dust. The second man, the second man is who? God. He is God, the Lord. Where's the Lord from? He's from heaven. So did he have the same body that Adam had? No. No. You say, wait a minute. Jesus came just like the rest of us. No, he did not. Where well, you read that at? That's not what the book teach. The book says when Luke, in the book of Luke, when the angel announced it to, to Mary, what did he say? Go back and read that. That the Holy Spirit was going to do something. And that holy child, how in the world if Mary had anything whatsoever, any part to play, in the Lord Jesus Christ being born, I'm talking about her body, her blood, her eating, whatever. The natural process of a baby being uh, uh, conceived in a womb and growing and coming out. If she had any part in that, if he had gotten her blood, folks, Jesus would have been born a sinner. Do you understand that? Sin is passed down that way. Conceived. He would have had sinful flesh, but the Bible says it was in the likeness of sinful flesh, not sinful flesh. Okay? He didn't have any desires to go sin. Neither did Adam when God first made him. Neither did Eve. But everybody else born of Adam and Eve did. Now, the Lord came from heaven.
came from heaven. Yes. That means he was already there. You can't come from somewhere if you wasn't there already. Jesus Christ came from heaven. That means he was there before he was born of Mary. Did you realize that? He is the Lord. He's not a Lord or part of a Lord. No, the Bible says he is the Lord. And the Lord said, and the Lord did. Let's go back to the Old Testament and start reading about all this Lord, Lord, Lord. Who's talking about? The Lord. It's only one, man. He came from heaven. If he isn't God, then there's two lords in heaven. There isn't two lords. There's one. And his name happens to be Jesus, who came down in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now, he did that. And as he came down from heaven, he overwhelmed Mary, put himself in there. And he said, well, how did Jesus, the baby, end up with blood? How did the first man end up with blood? Who gave it to him? How did Eve end up with blood? She wasn't born like me and you. How did she get blood? Come on, how, how did they get blood? God spoke it into existence. So, now, you answer the question. How did the Lord Jesus get blood? You think he got it through Mary? Of course not. As was the man of dust, so also those who were made of dust. Who are made of dust? Me and you. Why? Because we came through this man. So he was a sinner. You were a sinner. As is the heavenly man. Also those who are heavenly. How did he come down? What was, what was he born with? Was he born with sin? No. Then when you and I are born again, can you, can you sin? Are you born of sin? No. See, folks, this is what the Bible teach. This is plain language if you would simply allow it to say what it says. We take it and we twist it into whatever we want it to say. No, that's what it says. You are either like the man made of dust or you are like the man made from heaven, who came from heaven. You are one or the other. You can't be both. So, you are either part of heaven or you're part of hell. It's that simple. And as we have bore the image of the man of dust, we did that once. All of us were like that. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. I'm going to be just like Jesus. The body that that man possesses, I'm going to possess the same type of body. I don't care what you say. It doesn't even matter to me what people think, what people say. The scriptures make it clear. That when I die in this body and I get up and everybody that preceded me and everybody's going to come after me, all of us is going to have his body. That's what the book said. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh, your body, that has blood cannot go to hell. Cannot have any part of heaven. Nor does the people who remain corrupt. You cannot ever inherit corruption. Do you understand what he just said? He says if you were born 
in the natural state, there's absolutely nothing you can do to get in corruption. It's not even a possibility for you to ever inherit it. So how do I get it? God has to destroy this one and create that one. That's what you just read above. He has to take away the dust, kill it, and give you the one from heaven. But I tell you, this mystery, mystery simply means it wasn't revealed in the Old Testament. We shall not all sleep, sleep simply means die. And he don't mean all of us as in everybody he's talking about believers. We, he includes himself. But we, the believers, shall all be changed. This is how Enoch went to heaven. This is how uh, Elijah went to heaven. This is how Paul went. This is how John went. Listen to this. In a moon, it happens so fast. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. Talking about our bodies, and we shall be what? Change. Change. Why do we have to, why do we have to change, Lord? For this corruptible, this body, must put on in corruption. And this model that can die must, folks, put on immortality. There you have it. You need a body that can handle the spirit realm. You need a body that can go and live there forever. The body you have now is disposable. It is absolutely, positively disposable. It was never created to live forever. So, when this, what's this, your current body, when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality, then, and not only until, not, not until then, shall be brought to pass the saying, death, that is your ability to die physically, is swallowed up in victory. What's the victory? You can't die anymore. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, Hades, where's your victory? So there you go, friend. Look, I, I just can't say enough about this word. And how potent and listen, it explains itself. This is marvelous. If you just allow it and take it for what it literally says, take it literally unless it tell you this is likeness. When it says words like that, then you know it's not literal. Other word, otherwise, it is literal. And you have to take it that way. Now he says, therefore, don't let, you have a choice, don't let sin reign. Don't let it reign where? In your spirit? Of course not. Your spirit is brand new and is made after God. It's already immortal and it's already holy. Don't let it do it in your body. Control your body. How do I control my body? I read it to you. You've been studying with me. Psalm 119 tells you the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Don't come tell me about singing you no know, song. That won't help you control your body. Don't come tell me about spending time in Bible study. Don't come tell me, I mean, uh, in, in Bible classes and going to church and all that stuff. That, listen, that's helpful, but it ain't going to help you control this. What's going to help me? You have to be studying the word for yourself. Study the word. Study the word. 